AI clearly very much in the news right now with ChatGPT and Bing, etc. And so everyone is trying to figure out how is this going to change our lives and change how we interact with these new AI chatbots. You know, one way that we're going to see as users is clearly a greater variety of different types of chatbot. We've seen two that have emerged just in the last few weeks, and we'll see dozens more over the next few months. Now, a lot of that ChatGPT is taking place back in the cloud, back in the big cloud data centers. But as you just mentioned, a lot more of that processing is going to move out closer to us, where you get a more real-time behavior. And as these models that, were the, that everybody is training and building for different applications is going to become more efficient and more compact on our handheld devices. So it's pretty exciting. Well, so far we've been talking about the consumer-facing aspect of yes. this technology that Snap, uh, big ones like Google, Microsoft have their versions, but behind the scenes, as you point out, something has to power this. We need to have huge amounts of data crunched efficiently so it doesn't cost a huge amount for some of the, the operators, some of the, the companies that are offering this technology. Yes. How do you lower the cost of some of this technology? Well, there are several aspects to that. One aspect is back in those big cloud data centers. They are the masters of having reduced costs through economies of scale over the last, uh, over the last two decades. And one of the ways in which they do that is they simplify the hardware upon which they run, they make it programmable, and then they move as much of the control of the infrastructure up into software. Now, we're, network we're at a networking conference, and so it's really interesting to think about how the networking piece that operates inside those data centers, and then from those cloud data centers all the way out to the edge. And the overriding theme that's taking place is things that were fixed, things that were baked into silicon are being simplified to their programmable essence and then lifted up into software where the behavior is determined by software. And this is the theme that we're seeing out throughout the tech industry as a whole. As soon as you move it into software, it becomes more agile, you can add more capabilities, and those who own and operate networks can then reduce cost, they can make it lower power, and so all of that goodness that comes from that agility. So Nick, what does that mean for, for the telcos? They've invested billions of dollars into 5G infrastructure, and some of the conversations we have is a lot of these telcos are just scratching their heads now, thinking, right, we've made the investment, but where's our return on the investment? It's not what we had seen, it's not all the hype that we heard sort of over the past few years. When you talk about sort of software-defined networks, yes. uh, does that create a path to profitability by lowering some of those running costs and the infrastructure sort of uh, costs as well? So the thing that we saw first in cloud data centers and then we saw in the internet core, you may not know this, but the in entire internet core today runs in software on very simple hardware. And this is something that Intel and others have really pioneered over the last decade through what was called network function virtualization, which was to take the services that run the network and lift them up into software. What happened as a consequence? The internet became simpler. But because it was moved to software, that lower cost was then enhanced by the ability to make it more reliable, more power efficient. Now we're seeing the same thing happen in the cellular industry, in the mobile, the mobile industry. What they're doing is they're taking initially the bits that connect the base stations together and have moved that into software. Now they're taking the base stations themselves and moving those into software as well. When they do that, simplifies the hardware, lowers the cost. But then that investment that they make now they can take that through into, into future generations. They can upgrade the network on the fly, just like we do with our smartphones, right? And so if you can move to that kind of agility, then it not only lowers the cost, but gives them the power to keep improving and then to compete with each other. Because a lot of what they need to do is to figure out how they can differentiate from each other and compete in order to be able to get more of our business. 